Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy. In this video, we're going to go over the charting for VXUS Vanguard Total International Stock ETF. You can see it up here in the top left. Now, you guys always hear me mention I may own stuff in my index funds. My two main index funds are VT and VXUS. VT 60% United States, basically 40% international, but does have a cash balance. 9,600 different holdings, roughly. And VXUS. 90% international, 8% United States with a 2% cash balance with 7,800 different holdings. So with that many holdings between two different index funds, it's very likely that I that I could own the particular stock that I'm talking about. But before we go into any of the charting for VXUS, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Everything in this video contains only my opinion and is for entertainment purposes only. I do have an individual holding in VXUS, so keep that in mind, but I'm going to try and be as unbiased as possible. So I did make a recent buy in VXUS. Now, I would say that I got it right near the bottom, but I was buying uh, this set of support, and I'm going to go over why I was buying to give you guys an example of what I'm looking for, especially uh, with index funds and just identifying support whether it's a gap fill whether it's a retracement whether I just like the valuation there who knows but let's dive more into some of the uh, the charting aspects of it so from existence from inception 2011 it's very hard to to mark an uptrend because you have a low that takes out the all-time low price over here so it's hard to just set an uptrend right here but I'm very focused on this day in particular because you have a nice run and then you rest near this support and then it gets bullish and you push out the all-time high price so all I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on that wick and this wick right here all I'm going to do is run a line through all of that and get as many marks of contact as I possibly can so let's pull this over here just a little bit more and you see that I went to this wick Ah, my mouse. I went to this wick and started from here. Now I'm going to switch this over to a weak chart. Now more particularly why is looking at this candle, it's like, okay, you're putting, if you if you don't have anything to the right of your chart here, like, okay, it puts a nice wick right there, so what? When I switch this over to a weak chart, you're going to see why I'm very focused on that candle. You see what that weak candle looks like right there? It was the start of the week that it just taps this, and then it sets this nice looking candle. Now, looking over here, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 points of contact just in this trend line by itself. Now, I'm going to pull this all the way through, and you're going to see that we put a nice wick in through this. And you can see when we do, we do have trading days below this, of course, but when we do push through that, you can see the wicks acting on top of that. I like how this is set, but in more particular, if I were to set this as a channel, I'm going to go through as many points of contact on the top end as well. And you can see we have a fairly parallel channel right here. Now, of course, you have trading days above it, and of course, you have trading days below it. But when we push through it, you can see we gap down directly below it and it acts as resistance. You can see we gap up above it and it puts wicks above it, puts wicks on top, gaps down below, tries to fight through. But then when we fall through, you can see that we put a final wick to the top of it. So plenty of, of examples where it's acting as support and resistance. And it just so happens to be a nice parallel channel right here. Now, when talking about index funds, if I were to be comparing anything to what the United States index uh, charting, the U, uh, the S&P, the Dow, the Nasdaq, all of them very, very extended, and their high prices were very close to that full extension. What I mean by a full extension is when you take a Fib tool from the top of the move, bottom of the move. They are very close to full extension. So we're going to take this beginning inception price. We're just going to take this fall. And we're going to mark out top of the move, bottom of the move. And we're going to pull this all the way through. Now you see the difference with VXUS is that we put direct correlation with this first extension. Now is VXUS going to get a full extension? I do not know. 
but nonetheless it is nowhere near a full extended stock now when looking at individual companies you guys know that I like to uh, evaluate individual companies and whether it's charting whether it's financials whether it's doing a discounted cash flow model regardless I like to to try and get a decent valuation for a company when comparing United States based companies to international companies I would say there is a lot of uh, potential with international companies now are there companies international that are overvalued yes of course there are are there companies United States that are undervalued yes of course there are but all in all from a broad perspective international companies I think hold quite a bit more valuation than United States companies now that's my opinion whether it's right or wrong it doesn't matter that's just my own analysis you guys have the right to do your own analysis as well but nonetheless from a charting perspective I like everything that's set up with this chart so I'm going to take this fib tool off and we're also going to talk about um, this run right here now of course I've been I've been uh, averaging into this where I feel there's decent support just going off a week chart I'm pretty sure I bought near these days as well so on these days that I've bought down here to the low price I was still down 20 percent but it's about building your position I'm sure I probably bought this gap as well I probably bought this gap as well I probably bought this gap as well but we're gonna switch over to a day chart and we're going to talk about this day in particular right here because this is when I would say I started getting a little bit more aggressive into VXUS now talking we have our uptrend we have our up ascending channel right here and now you can see we do have a clear downtrend we have a clear downtrend right here and it's actually trading right into this today am I worried about selling it into this downtrend no no, I'm looking to hold this for 30, 40 years because I think that the world's economy is going to be better 30, 40 years down the road when I'm looking to retire. That's based uh, upon all the innovation, all the bright minds out there. I think that those people are going to make this world's economy a better place. And as I stated, 7,800 different holdings and 9,600 different holdings between the two index funds that I mainly hold, VT and VXUS, I think that I have a decent footprint into the world economy that I think is going to be better in 30, 40 years. That's my strategy. It works for me. It might not work for you. But nonetheless, we have this descending channel right here. You see this nice parallel channel down? My goal is to pick up on the bottom end support. And I'm not as focused at picking up shares into resistance. Now, if this price is to come back down to here, I'll be more than happy to pick up off this long-term trend line that I have set because I think that it's fairly priced at that time. Now, talking about some of these, so I like to use FIB tools from top of the move, bottom of the move, maps out extensions, maps out resistance. The same can be done on large moves up. So I'm going to take a FIB tool from the bottom of the move to the top of the move of this run right here. Now, I could talk about so many different things in here, but I'm going to talk about two of my personal entries into this. Now, one of my entries take, took place during this week right here. One, we were at decent support. Two, we're coming down to a nice retracement. And three, we have a nice gap fill right here that I'm going to mark for you guys. This gap I definitely had identified, and I had definitely had this gap right here identified as well. I like this as a potential buy window. Now, as we were getting closer to this buy window, where are we at in terms of my my uh, fib tool coming into my 618? You can see we wick into that. We wick through this gap and my downtrend. This is a clear buying opportunity for me. Now, was I interested in selling it up here? No, I'm looking to hold this for 30, 40 years. But when this support cracks, the next thing that I have on my chart is this gap now as you can see we gap all the ways through that not much of a buying opportunity to buy that gap when the price never is there so after this gap fill the next thing on my chart is my 702 now the same way 702 is deadly on the upside it can be deadly on the downside for a bear a short of it now look at this action we get off this 702 
Now, what else do we have marked in with this near the 702? We have a gnarly gap fill right here. And we had another, eh, no, there wasn't another gap. We had a nice gap fill right here around 45 and a half. Below that, we had another gap fill. Okay. So we have near our long-term uptrend. You guys know I have my long-term uptrend right here. We have the 702. We have a gap fill. And we have the bottom end of this channel. This, to me, is a buying window. This is what I'm looking for. Now, if we get rejected up here, I'm definitely going to be interested in this long-term uptrend. This is why I'm sharing this with you guys. And I could have shared it with you guys down here, but I'm not trying to, to make a video and then have you guys go out and buy something the next day. I want you guys to see sort of what I'm looking for and then use it for your own benefits. But nonetheless, if the price does get down to here, I'm going to look at it as a buying opportunity. So we're going to clear out our chart and we're going to go over a couple more things. That was a decent example of, some, of a couple areas of where I like to buy into my index fund at support. Now we also see that we have a nice W pattern right here. Going back to more of the history of the chart. Now with this W pattern, you guys know I like the neckline trade. This is my neckline. You have a fall, you have a left bottom, you build the neckline, you have a right bottom. You get an extended right leg. One day it's going to back test the neckline. We put three wicks into this neckline. We get a nice extension. We trade down to these lows again. Okay, we get a nice truly extended right leg. Because right here, if I were to mark this high price... It never does really get over that wick, but over here you can see we truly get over top of that wick. Now where do we trade down to when this gets bearish? This trades right back down to my original neckline. So I'm going to clear my chart here. I'm very focused on this fall that falls down to my neckline. I'll keep my neckline marked right there so you guys can see that. We get very good action off this neckline. I'm going to take a fib tool, top of the move, bottom of the move. Top of the move, bottom of the move. Now, where do we get hard rejected from? The deadly 702. If you guys have watched any of my videos, you guys know I think that the 702 is one of the most deadly retracements, probably the most deadly retracement. That's my opinion. But look at this action that we get. It just so happens that we set this double top near this 702 direct correlation with that 702 and then out of nowhere out of the blue just COVID comes 2020 who would have thought right who would have thought nobody could have ever seen that coming right okay whatever you get a huge fall right here now you get a large run and now this comes down to my original 702 let's mark that in again you guys see what I'm you guys kind of get some of the points I'm trying to make right here. All in all, I think VXUS is a very good index fund to get into as you're getting almost triple the yield compared to the S&P. You're getting broad exposure to some of these international companies that I think are pretty fairly valued in my opinion. Now, am I telling you guys to go dump all your money into this? No. No. This is just for entertainment, guys. But this is a fund that I like and a fund that I think it would benefit portfolios. And I think I'm going to benefit from it a lot going into the future. To wrap up this video, I'm going to stay true to this original FIB tool. Top of the move, bottom of the move. And I'm looking for a full extension one day over the next 30, 40 years. I'm looking to hold this index fund for the next 30, 40 years because I think the world's economy is going to be a better place. I hope you guys enjoy the video, and we'll see you on the next one.